Welcome to Tuesday's Ask Leaves. It's me, Lieberman. We got three emails and boom, the intro's done in five seconds. Ha ha! Damn it, eight seconds. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I got a couple of emails today that are a little lengthy um, and it's mostly like confession and, and context, but I feel like it's gonna be easier if I just kind of give you the gist and then jump into the question. So the first email comes from a, a closeted male Lieber friend. Um, and uh, he's 16 years old. Um, and uh, he, uh, he's wrestling, wrestling very much with uh, what to do, whether he should come out, how does he feel about himself, the difficulties of kind of living not a double life, but just not a full life. One where you're cutting yourself off in many ways from who you are to survive. And uh, he wanted to know, he, he just, he wanted to know if I had any advice, my thoughts on the matter, or even just what I think of gay people in general. Uh, and I mean, obviously I love people, all people. Um, and I have gay friends. There's, There's nothing different. There's nothing wrong. There's, we're all just people trying to survive and love the people that we love. That's, there's nothing fucking wrong with that. My advice to you, I mean, obviously, I don't know your life. I don't know all the stresses of, or reasons why you aren't ready to come out. Um, I think that you should and that your life will be better when you do. You probably though have some good reasons, or at least good reasons to you right now for why you don't wanna do it. It's hard, it's really fucking hard to lead a life where you're lying to yourself and to everyone around you. Um, it's a lot harder than being authentic and it's nowhere near as fulfilling. Your life, it, your life is not really going to begin until you come out. You recognize that, right? That once it's over, once you've come out, once you've come out, then you can be whoever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do. The trade-off is, you know, there will be people who don't understand. Um, and that could include your family. And I'm sorry about that. I've always wondered, when I was in high school, a lot of people, a lot of people thought that I was gay and treated me as if I was. And it led to like a long period of questioning and doubting. No matter how often I was like obsessed with a girl or like trying to pursue a girl or talking about girls or whatever, uh, it would be this nagging thought in my head of just like, what if they know me better than I know me? What if they're right and I'm wrong and everything that I know about myself is incorrect because they must know something that I don't. Because uh, otherwise, they wouldn't keep saying that I'm gay. And uh, I, I don't know that I ever had a, a time where I was like really thinking about like, uh, if if I were to come out, what would I do? How would people react? Because uh, luckily, I have a family that's very, I think, very understanding. And I think they would have gotten and they would have loved me just the same. And I know that I'm lucky on that score. But. I, in, in, since then, I've, I've wondered a lot, actually, about what it must be like to come out and how stressful that must be, how scary it must be, and how alone at times you can feel if you don't have real confidants, if you don't have a base of people that you know will be there, even if something goes wrong. That's got to be really fucking scary. What I'd like to say, and it's like how I wish that I would act, and I don't know that I would have when I was a teenager, but fucking, you're never not going to be you. You're never not going to be you. You're not going to change who you are intrinsically just to have people around you. If you do, it's a stopgap, and it will leave you miserable or dead. I want you to be able to say, this is me, and if you don't like it, fuck you. 
That's how I think everyone should be. As long as you are not living a life where you're actively injuring people or hurting people to get by, if you have a soul, if you have a conscience, if you care about other people, then you should be able, you have the right to say, this is who I am and fuck you if you don't get it. Fuck you if you don't get it. You say you love me, this is who I am. If you really love me, you would still love me because I have not changed. I am sharing more of myself with you. I'm sorry that you're wrestling with this and I hope that you find an answer that makes sense to you. Um, and I hope that when you do come out that you're met with support and with love because that's what everyone deserves. I hope that helps. All right. Next email. <clears throat> okay, so this next email uh, comes from a Libra friend named Jackson. He is from uh, Austin, Texas, and he's 15. He's a soccer player, a damn good soccer player, and uh, one of his dreams is to be a professional soccer player, and uh, football for everyone else around the world. I know we're idiots. Moving on. Um, <clears throat> But it's not all that he wants to do. He also, some night, some days he'll wake up and he'll be like, I want to be a stand-up comedian or, or, a co or a poet or whatever. He has a lot of passions. His family says you can be good at a lot of things or you can be great at one thing. And maybe there's some wisdom in that. But he says he doesn't quite know what he wants to do and he hates that he feels like he's already locked into what his life's going to be at 15. And I guess what I'll say to you, Libra friend, Jackson, is that you are not locked into any one thing. Life has so many crazy twists and turns. And also, you're not set on some kind of predestined path. If one day you wake up and you never want to look at a fucking soccer ball again, you don't have to. You don't. You also shouldn't be concerned with whether or not your parents are proud of you. Yes, they did birth you. Uh, thank you for that. But you're the one living this life, not them. So if you don't want to go pro and you want to fucking explore tons of, a ton of stuff and like have a different life, that's your option. That's your choice. You're able to do that. You, I'm giving you permission to do that. Now, if you do want to be a professional soccer player, I'm afraid you're going to have to spend a lot of your time playing soccer to make that happen. That's something that you have to decide if that's what you want out of your life, then at least for the next couple of years, you have to fucking really put your heart and soul into it. Can you still do other things? Of course, but you're not gonna have a ton of time for them. That's the trade-off, that's what you get. When you're talented at a, at a bunch of things, the trade-off is uh, if you want to get paid to do one, you have to do it a lot. I'll give you an example. Uh, so. A year ago, I got hired at SourceFed. Before that, I was an actor, uh, an unemployed actor, and a writer, an unemployed writer, and I'd get little gigs here and there, uh, and I was hosting for free at AfterBuzz TV, not getting paid, and uh, I thought hosting was fun, but it was really more of like a departure, it was a diversion, it was just something to do and to get on camera and feel productive when I wasn't looking for work as an actor or a writer, and my family pleaded with me to give up on acting and just focus on hosting because they thought that I was better at it. And I'm like, well, you've never seen me act. They're like, it doesn't matter. You're good at a thing, go do that thing. And I really fucking railed against it. I was like, how dare they feel like, think that they have the right to decide for me what's right for me. You know, I know myself, this is my dream, this is my life, blah, blah, blah. Um, ultimately, they were kind of right. I stopped going on auditions and I did way more hosting and wound up like working 20 hours a week hosting. And uh, when the audition for SourceFed came my way, the amount of experience that I had helped me get my audition and helped me rock the audition. And uh, now I'm on a completely different career path than I ever expected to have. I never thought I'd be a YouTuber. I, 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 I wanted to have a sitcom. I still might have a sitcom someday. Um, I don't know. 
That's the beauty of living a life that you never expected is you you have some idea of like, okay, if I want to be successful at this thing, I need to, you know, try to make this, this, and this happen over the next couple of years. But other than that, most of the plan is gone. And I'm trying actively not to and to leave myself open to possibilities because I'm already fucking way off the reservation. Um, so just know that no choice is lasting, that you can have a variety of different lives in one life, um, but that if you do want to focus on professional sports, aka the like single most desired job anywhere, you need to put work into it and focus on it because a lot of people want that gig. A lot of people. Um, the more that you work at it, the better a shot that you have of getting it. I hope that helps. All right. Final email. Uh, this email is from a Libra friend. Oh, no, he says I can use his name. This is from Mikey. Mikey Beta. Um, <clears throat> Dear Mr. Lieberman. Mr. Lieberman is my father and my brother. He's also, he wears a suit to work. He's also a Mr. Lieberman. I accidentally sent you an empty email a long time ago. Sorry about that. Ooh, I was fuming. It's okay. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> anyway, it's been like two and a half months since I last emailed you because I feel like life's been good lately and I hope your life has been good too. It has. Thanks for asking. Um, or for saying so. So anyway, my school is starting the first student run play and I want to audition for it and I really want a lead. I'm confident that I'll get something important because, not trying to sound cocky, but the moderator, the teacher or administrator of overseas clubs and such, and the director say I have some talent and that I had the best trial audition. Uh, but I have huge stage fright and I was wondering if you had any tips on getting over nervousness and tips for actually putting yourself in a role. Um, P.S. I also want to join one of your Google Hangouts, but even that makes me nervous and shy. Don't be. Everyone is fucking sweet and nice and no one would ever say a mean word to you. Every, it's Libra Friend Hangouts are just pure love. It's pure love and sometimes erotic clippy fan fiction. But that's that was just one time. Okay, uh, <laughs> I still can't believe we did that. So, in terms of getting over stage fright, uh, preparation helps. Preparation helps a lot. The better you know your material, the less scary it is that you'll forget a line. Um, I've never really had stage fright. So it's hard for me to jump into the thought. Or maybe I did when I was young, but... You can try to ignore the audience. That helps. Focus on what you're doing. Focus on other, the other people in the play. Yes, you'll see shapes out there and you'll hear laughter or responses or whatever, but focus on the people in the play with you and try not to think about them so much. Uh, if this is something that you want to do, being on stage is a big part of it. Uh, know, that, know that no one in the audience is rooting for you to fail. Everyone wants you to do well. Everyone. They all want to see a great show. So go in there knowing that you have the audience's support. They're not waiting for you to fuck up. They're waiting for you to do your job, which is to act. That's great. Go in knowing that you have a whole crowd of fans who don't even fucking know you, but they are your fans because they want to see a great play. Um, in terms of getting into a role... I try all the time to relate it to my own life. You know, obviously, I've never been a soldier in the Roman army, but I do know what it's like to be stressed out. I know what it's like to be scared. Uh, I know what it's like to have a, a boss or a teacher or somebody who I can't stand, but I have to take their orders. These are all things in my life that I can then apply to what's on the page. Try not to think of it just as words. Why is this person saying this? How do they feel? What are they trying to make the other person feel? Don't think too much about it because then you'll get way in your head. But, you know, try to just like, as you're going through the script and you're highlighting your lines and maybe even every time there's a punctuation mark, you do a little slash so you see how the dialogue is broken up. Um, <clears throat> 
Try to think about what this person is feeling and what that makes you feel. How do you connect it back to you? Um, listening to music that puts you into that place emotionally is helpful before a show. Um, or like looking, if it's like a sad play, like looking at old mementos or something that maybe makes you sad or wherever you have to be, whoever you're supposed to be, whatever can bring you closer to them or bring them closer to you is, uh, is helpful. I'm sorry if this feels like, this feels like actory fucking bob gobbledygook, um, but I hope it's helpful. Um, yeah, just learn your shit, have it cold, um, and know that everyone there wants you to succeed. And then just go, go have fun. Go have fun. Kill it. Please. All right, folks, that's going to be all for today. Um, I should have said this in yesterday's video, but I'm, I'm, I'll say it in this one. Uh, at least for the time being, I think I'm not going to do Ask Leaves on Friday anymore, and I'm going to stick to four videos a week. Um, I've been getting emails from some of you. Some of you notice that uh, I am kind of pushing myself to the limit in terms of like getting everything in my life done. Um, including videos that you guys haven't seen yet because uh, they, I'm waiting until my studio's built to really launch the channel. And uh, frankly, I just need a little bit more of my time back. Um, and I hope that that's okay with you. It's just something that I have to step back from for a little while while I figure out how much I can really tackle. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye.